Welcome to another Snack Day video. In this video, we're going to review the Wicon LX3V PLC and the Wicon Levy 10 inch HMI. And these are interesting products to me because they are very inexpensive by industrial automation standards and they seem to offer a compelling value proposition. So, this video is going to be about the PLC. I'll make another video about the HMI, so you can check that. I'll link that in the description. The first thing I'm going to do is show you the features of this PLC and my general impressions. And then I'm going to show you the programming path. I'm going to make a simple program and download it and tell you my thoughts on that. And last, I'm going to take it apart and show you how it looks inside. So this model is the LX3V 1212MR D. And these come in different configurations, but this one has 12 inputs and 12 outputs. Um, these are relay outputs, signified by the R, and this is the 24 volt DC input version because it's, uh, this one is not um, UL certified, so you run into less trouble by powering it off 24 volts. Um, the, it's DIN rail mountable uh, on the back. The case is plastic. It has these covers for the terminals and it has LEDs for the inputs and outputs. Uh, there's an expansion header here, which allows you to they sell different expansion modules for different types of inputs. For the project I'm using this for, I needed additionally uh, a single RTD input. An RTD is a resistor-based um, thermal thermal probe, a thermal sensor. So uh, they rather than buying the thermal module, you can buy an expansion, a smaller expansion module that fits in here. So this came in a separate package and it uh, this cover comes off and this board screws in here. And I also needed a 4 to 20 milliamp output. And they actually sell a uh, small module that gives you two RTD inputs and two 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. So that was perfect for this application because that meant I didn't need all the extra daisy chainable modules and superfluous inputs. And this one is the uh, LX3V 2PTA underscore BD version 1.1. So that's pretty handy. This one has uh, two com communication interfaces. It's got a COM port here with this sort of unlabeled connector and it's got uh, a RS-485 or RS-422 output here which is labeled. The reason this one isn't labeled I think is because this one is meant for the HMI usually uh, but it'd be nice to have some labels on there. There's also this unmarked switch in here which I found out by looking at the manual uh, is the run stop switch and there's the micro USB port for programming. This one is powered from 24 volts DC which are input on these two terminals here. I've got this 24 volt power supply here and I'm going to be connecting the PLCs so we can power it on. My unit did not come with a micro USB cable, so that's something to keep in mind. But I have a lot of micro USB cables, so it wasn't a big deal for me. I'll plug it in to the computer, and let's go over to the computer. This is the program that I've been working on, um, and it's pretty simple. There's, uh, I've got a counter, a pulse counter here that increments a value. I've got 
um, some logic here that controls a water, uh, it's like a bang bang controller to control uh, water flow to a certain set value and I've got a lid shut up and there's uh, some just enables and I've got a PID loop that is set up here which actually works quite, seems to work quite well and it's not too hard to set up and uh, just the rest of the PID actually running here so the editing is um, straightforward once you get a hang of it uh, you can sort of draw arbitrarily uh, with these tools here it does take a little bit of getting used to if you want to add a let's say we want to add a contact here so uh, we add a physical contact for probably the most basic thing you can do on a PLC is map a physical contact to a output relay so let's say let's map uh, x1 so so we'll load x1 and we'll map it to um, say out y1 and then you just connect just like that and see if it compiles and it seems to uh, save on compile which is great I it's probably a standard feature but it's it's great for avoiding data loss when if you, if you encounter a crash which I have in this editor what else can we do we can for example invert the logic um, so let's download this program and see what happens so I'm going to uh, trans set up the transfer and it does seem I've had great success with downloading like it finds the right port like you don't have to configure much it just sort of finds it uh, and you can just oops, to compile oh and there's a crash so that's not a good thing not a good thing at all but luckily it saved it so not a really big deal. And write to PLC. Uh, I guess it didn't save our uh, connection setup. So we write to PLC and um, just uh, select all and execute it. It asks you if you if you want to continue running after it's downloaded. So that's nice. It starts running right after. See on the on the camera. Um, now it does take a, few, a second, but then it starts running. So in order to energize the input, we need to set the ground reference first. So I'm going to use this. And the ground reference. This was hard to figure. Maybe it's an industry convention, but the ground reference is the S over S. You can see already that the output is on because X1 is low. But if we tap um, the input, you can see it. It's exactly the opposite of what the input is. So this is not supposed to be a lesson on how to program PLC, but this gives you an idea of the flow of this one. Um, now let's look at the monitor mode. We can go here and push monitor, and it tells us the state. Uh, the blue here means that it's on or active and if I tap the X1 you can see the, the response time is reasonable you can see the uh, scan time down here 0.6 milliseconds and in my experience even with that larger program earlier it stays the same this thing has a pretty fast little mic microcontroller in it which we'll see later. We can actually look at each variable here. So we we'll just start this, and we can we can set all the different variables. The C is like uh, for counters. Uh, D is general data variables, word ver uh, data words you can store. 
M is like virtual inputs or outputs. They're like bits you can uh, easily assign to inputs and outputs, so you can kind of see. You can go in here and write different values into these variables and act on that. So that's the basic flow with the PLC. You can start it or stop it remotely. And so now let's go and look inside.